Do you want to hear more of David Lynch's after me? I actually have, I've never actually read it out loud. So it's very interesting to read it out loud. I've always read my poetry books out loud and that's always an interesting experience, but I've never read David Lynch's after me out loud. Um, so I think that this is a good experience uh, that I should read that out loud for you. I should read the whole book. Um, so I think I'm going to do that and we're going to do that in a series of videos. Uh, I, th I think that this is worthy content <laughs> for YouTube. Why not? What else have I got to do? What else have you got to do? I don't have anything to do. So we're going to sit down with my glass. Journal entry, December 4th, 2017. It's 1.30 on a random Monday. There's nothing that I have been doing, so I went to the market. I'm enjoying an Americano. I got a job at La Parisienne working as a barista. I'm hoping to get money together to pay off bills, to have savings again, to have some adventures. I think it would be good for me to get off my laurels. I just need to be careful about my sleep schedule. I'm starting to get bags under my eyes. I really want that second paycheck. I really want to push myself to those heights. The city seems rough on Tim. He seems tired today. The sound is gorgeous from my seat. The sun is peeking from out the clouds. I want to buy some work pants that accentuate my unfortunate fat body. I was in fact. I keep wondering if I'll meet David Lynch. I feel like I had, but I don't remember how or where or when. I only have a vague idea about it. Moments that are there and then gone. Humans are fascinating. The whole of our experience. The mere fact that we exist at all is overwhelming to me. We are a tiny speck in the jelly void of the universe that sat and just so and had materials needed to create something aware of all of it. Not that we're the only thing, but I mean, wow, being alive is fascinating and scary. And people treat it like it's dull, mundane, ordinary. It's maddening. I don't know how. Perhaps I like that when I was a, when I was a teenager, I feel very limited. And then, even then, I had dreams of growing up, of going outside the walls of home. I moved, creeping along, experiencing the hills and valleys, the deserts and the mountains. There's so much, so much that I haven't seen yet that I want to see. I very much want to see. I want to see Tokyo, Thailand, India, China, and even Russia. I need to stop hating myself. I need to love my body. I love days like today that there's so much potential. There's so much that I can do today and even do nothing at all if I really wanted to. I should really get some things done, but honestly, just existing, being present in the moment is pretty nice too. Anyway, the sun is out and even if it's slightly chilly, I'm going to go out and experience this day in all its glory. The journal from April 2015, around the time I place this brand is missing. I think when I did the Marine Kondo, the life-changing magic of tidying up, I tried to throw away a bunch of journals because they made me sad because I thought they were a waste and that I was useless like I often go through during certain periods. Actually, uh, as an addendum, I did find those journals. Um, I organized them and I found those journals. So when I was at the height of my manic episode, I tried desperately to find that journal then and two, being angry at myself, the world, and David Lynch for not having it. I vowed never to throw another journal away, which I haven't. I actually did find those journals. I just was confused at the time. It's already actually a show called Twin Peaks, but I heard David Lynch was talking about it doing a third season. Rosemary didn't reply. She looked down at her pink and purple spiral notebook and doodled little pictures, but was listening to me. In America during the 1950s, we built during the nuclear age, the age of the bomb. I see all like kinds of ideas coming from it, bursts of things. And I reached up as though there were little balls of light coming in front of me, starting to pluck them one by one. Like so, like this. It was kind of like Batman, pow, wham, kapow, whammo. She looked up at me, stopping her doodles, looking dubious. Before it was the depression, and the depression was ridiculous. It was terrible. It was full of greasy-faced men who would roll through the fields and, with unlit cigarettes, going up to strangers asking for a light. I was trying to be funny. She wasn't impressed. I forgot I was talking and that David Lynch was there and that it was an empty room. I felt possessed. I kept talking for a long time. Rosemary walked away from me at one point and I followed her. It was a slow afternoon. Nobody had come in. It was before the super bloom. Nobody blew in from the dusty trail. 
Two men sat with their overfilled coffee. When I followed her, we stood in the server station. When she walked away from me there, I talked to myself for a little while, and then I walked away the other way to find a server finally. What I said to myself was, but there's no way he's David Lynch because he'd steal the idea from me because he's a hack who didn't have the idea on his own, and he'd destroy my life in order to successfully steal it from me. He'd have to use my friends and family to learn everything about me in order to do that. He'd have to use an army of old, graying men to follow me and keep tabs on me in case, uh, in case I talked, and he would have to make a game of it to make me crazy. And that's the first of my false memories. Journal entry, August 30th, 2015. Failure, rejection, denial. All these emotions should wind, want, be wind in my sail to keep moving, to keep working, to doing all the things that I need to do to succeed. Depression will kill me if I let it, and that's not the option anymore. I want to be stronger than that. I want to be stronger than failure. I want to be stronger than rejection letters. I want to be stronger than the things and the experiences that are denied to me. And that was one thing I remember from Akilah and the Bee, and it was said by Lawrence Fisher before he, she went to compete. It's a quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us, and we are to let our own light shine. We unconsciously give other people the permission to do the same. This is part of the artist's way, is it not? I need to be kind to myself. I need to keep trying. I feel inspired. I can't just let a rainstorm of ideas dry up when I go home. I need to put energy and work into my projects. I need to make a list of things I need to work on. And certainly it will be a fight, but I have to keep trying. Because I've already experienced this, I am powerful beyond measure. And I am tired of hating myself. Journal Entry, December 5th, 2017 I'm trying to add new stuff to my life while trying to maintain the old. I drank a bottle of rosé and ate a package of vegetarian chicken nuggets. I have so much to do. I want to get my life back in order. I want to get so much done. But I feel so tired I didn't get any sleep last night. I might just lay down for a couple hours. I might just... that, But that just might end up bad for me, too. It's fall, and I have a car. I drive to the beach in Muskegon. Every day is different at the beach. It's October... I'm riding with the heater on because I'm always cold. I am alone here and mostly independent. It's 2018 and I haven't worked all year. There are a million thoughts, but they don't come all at once. I cry sometimes, but that's usually when memories bubble up. My journal entries are filled with Tim, which causes me to cry again. I write bad poetry. Everyone who is close to me knows about my manic episode. I've been very wary about telling people about it, but I've been telling more people. I'm scared about being labeled as crazy. What happened was not normal, to say the least. I do a lot of things that are not normal. I am a wibble girl. We all do things that are not normal. Jessica and I were Harvey girls. Jessica did seasonal work a lot longer than I did. She went up to Alaska. I'm too scared of small planes for that. She went to pretty lonely locations out in Utah and Texas for short amounts of time, sometimes a matter of weeks. The waves of Lake Michigan are crashing. I hate Muskegon a lot of the time, but I love the beach. The beach and the waves are ever-changing. Today, especially, it's crashing. I write a poem about the tantrum of the gods. It's terrible poetry, but I'm trying something new. I don't plan to share it with anyone. When I left Michigan, it was a stroke of luck. I had fallen for a man who lived in Iowa, and Iowa wasn't very nice, but I lived liked living there for a while. The relationship didn't last. The job I had didn't feel fulfilling after a while. I didn't feel meant for desk work. Was that all there was to my life? I felt like an adventurer. I still feel like an adventurer. I quit my job with no plan. I spent that October of 2013 holed up in my tiny efficiency in Iowa, watching movies like Solaris and Brazil and watch, br drawing this idea for a graphic novel I had and applying for a job at Grand Canyon, where my sister was currently working. I got the job within a week, so I relaxed the next rest of the month. I'm done writing my self-assigned six poems a day, showing little tick marks at the base of my thumb that I keep track of them. I put my pen and paper down and turn off the car, the war of the jazz on the radio, and the heater slowly going away. I need a moment of silence even after I turn off the car. I am greeting with the crashing of the waves on the soft beach and the whistling of the wind. It begins to rain a little. It was at Grand Canyon that I met Tim, and I loved telling people the story of how I met him. 
Grand Canyon Village is a fairly small community, and there are probably about 900 people there, give or take. I worked as a hostess at the Bright Angel restaurant before I switched jobs and worked as a print clerk in human resources. I liked the print clerk job better because I gained more money to go out. One of my nights with some of my friends at the pizza pub, I look over to my right, and there's this guy with beer and a pizza reading a book on a Friday night. I couldn't believe it. Here we are on one of the most beautiful places on earth, and this guy is reading a book. Though I admit, it was, I was reading more than I had been reading lately, too, because I didn't have a smartphone anymore, and I didn't have cable anymore. Hey, I said to the guy, what are you reading? A biography about James Joyce, he said, not really missing a beat. That looks like the most boring book I've ever seen, I said flatly. It's so thick. Offended, the man said. Well, what are you reading? That's how I met Tim originally. We talked about books. When we got done, I turned my back to the conversation with my friends. He finished eating, gathered up his stuff, and left. My friend Shelley said, I think that guy might be your soulmate. We all started laughing. Within four months, we were living together. Tim was the one who convinced me to watch Twin Peaks for the first time and tried to get me to watch more of his films. I haven't seen all of his films. Although, by this time, now in 2024, I have seen all of his films. I was out to lunch with my mom, and she says, I wish you wouldn't watch his stuff. There are so many other directors out there. And there are. Um, okay, let's end here for now. We're on page 20. Um, so we'll end on December 6th. So now we've met Tim. I hope you're enjoying this. <laughs>